Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't noticed, I got an awesome new workspace, big new table, and an awesome new project built. And recently, a very large BMX bike company reached out to me to design an electric BMX bike. Nothing really came of it, but in that process, I designed my own electric BMX bike. And I'm gonna build it. Now, they didn't really show much interest, but I want one. Now that I see it, I'm like, yeah, I want one of these. So I'm gonna take this guy, which is my BMX bike, which hasn't really seen much action. Oh my God, I'm gonna say that. start with this as the platform and I'm going to try and make as minimal amount of modifications to the bike as possible. The design is actually a dual motor setup with a friction drive off the back wheel. And some of the parts are a little weird so hopefully everything turns out right. I'm sure there'll be some issues but we'll, we'll see them as we go. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the video. When it comes to electric bikes you have a couple different designs that you can go with for doing an electric drive. Um, the first one, which you've seen in some other videos I've done, are the hub motors. Um, those are typically the easiest. It's a big hub motor that basically goes on the back wheel and it's, a, it's driven from the back wheel. But in this project, I wanted to keep the weight distribution proper so that you could actually ride it at a skate park. The motor being in the back wheel actually creates a lot of weight towards the back of the bike, making it not as easy to jump and to control. So having a mid motor mount would be the best solution here. Now mid-motor mount, um, they make a couple kits, but they're typically pretty heavy. So I wanted to keep this a really light package. And my design idea was actually taken from a man named Tom Stanton on YouTube. I'm sure you've seen some of his videos. He'd making a hobbyist motor dual motor setup, and that seemed to be the, the best course of action for what I had. But he used a belt drive to the back with a gear reduction system. I decided to go with a friction drive, which had some benefits to it, but also had some downsides. So the main benefit of a friction drive is that you get the gear reduction without having to put a big sprocket on the back because these motors spin up to 7,000 RPMs and a BMX bike the back wheel only spins around 300 RPMs. So I wanted to get a gear reduction of 20 to 1. Well conveniently the back tire is 20 inches big so a drive system 1 inch big to 20 gets you a gear reduction of 20 to 1. That allows you to get about 350 RPMs to the back wheel from a 7,000 RPM motor. Now the dual motor setup was put in place so I have extra power and extra torque. Surprisingly, these motors, which are M board 6355s, they have about 2.5 kilowatts of peak power that goes into them. So that puts you at about five kilowatts with a dual motor setup. Now the dual motors are actually mounted on a, what I call a bulkhead or a motor plate. This is gonna be bolted to the inside of the frame right here and it's a very tight package. You can see these are very small motors and they were chosen for their overall width and how they could be packaged inside the bike without having um, to interfere with the cranks. So the cranks still work, everything still works. You can still pedal around, you can still coast, you can move the cranks around as you're moving. It doesn't interfere with any of that. These two motors are actually coupled with a belt and that's uh, basically a 3D printed piece that slips onto the outside of the motor housing and has a HTD5M belt style on it. Now in order to get proper tension, I have a tensioner which goes on here, which can be slid down. And I also have an additional um, way of moving the motors back and forth. That's to accommodate the tension from the output belt to the rear friction pulley. Now from the motor, the belt actually runs back to this friction drive system. Now this is an all aluminum prototype that I've made and it's basically an HTD5M pulley, 15 millimeters wide and that runs to a friction drive system, all steel. It's got two ceramic bearings from NC Board Shop, thank you Mel. And those actually ride on the tire face, creating a friction surface. Now this spins up to like 7,000 RPMs, but it has the same surface speed as a bicycle going about 30 miles per hour. So I air down the tire, I push it in, and I air the tire back up, and it gives me a good friction surface. Now the only bad part about this is that if we get on any sort of wet surface, it's gonna reduce that friction, reduce the amount of torque it can convert to the back wheel. This bolts up directly to the, the brake stays. So there's no modification to the bike. The, all of the torque is transferred through this plate, through the brake stays on the, on the bike. So there's no additional welding or any sort of aspect like that. You just bolt this up and hook the belt up and you got your output drive shaft.
Now when it comes to batteries, uh, there's a lot of options you can choose from. Um, I actually chose to go with the LiPo version. LiPos can actually provide you with a large amount of power output for their overall size and for their weight. You know, they're still pretty heavy, but the, the downfall of these is that they don't have a lot of energy. The, the range on this bike is supposed to be around uh, three miles maybe max, but if you're at the skate park shredding like three miles is a, a couple of really good runs in a row. So this is actually two 5S 5 amp hours, and I put those in series with a small connector here, and that gets me a 10S system, and that's a max of 40 volts pretty much, or 40 something volts when you charge it all the way up. Along with the batteries, I've actually got a little pre-charge unit that you can purchase. I actually bought this one from M Boards as well, and this allows you to basically connect to your controller without having any sort of spark. Now, a higher voltage, 40 volts, will spark. There's a lot of big capacitors inside that system, and if you don't have this set up, you could potentially damage your electronics, and I didn't want to risk it, so I put this bad boy on there, and it helps out a lot. Now when it comes to controllers, I actually tried a couple out on this one and I came to the conclusion that the best one was the Dual Vesk. Uh, this is the flip ski version. Um, this allows you to get up to 100 amps per motor, uh, which is more than I needed. I actually ended up going with 50 amps per motor, 100 amps total. Um, and these are just really nice to work with. Um, I bought some of the M boards one and they just didn't work that well and they had some issues. So I went with a fully programmable system. And you know you can plug it into USB and you can tweak your settings so you can actually get the power output you want, you can get the regen you want, and this was the best one I, I found for the whole entire system. It's got a really small footprint which is helpful with this project. Now another consideration I had for the BMX bike is you got to be able to do bar spins and tail whips, right? So having a throttle cable that came down and you couldn't really run it through a gyro or anything like that, so I had to run a remote. Um, I ended up getting a flip ski remote to match with this bad boy, but I had to make some modifications to it so that I could use it as a thumb throttle. As you can see here, I've, uh, I've kind of gone the dumb way with the prototype. I took the flip ski remote, I took the potentiometer on there, it's a, it's a Hall Effect style, and I rewired it to a handlebar mount throttle setup. So this actually has forward and regen. Um, and it works great. Unfortunately, you got to stick this up on your handlebars, but it eliminates the wire that comes off the handlebars, allowing you to do bar spins and tail ups without having to like unwind a coil or be worried about ripping it off. That's it for the majority of the main components. I'm missing a couple small things here and there, some pulleys and some belts, but those should be showing up in the mail soon, and we'll be ready to rip this thing. That's pretty much it until I get the last belt that I need um, to come back here. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's fingers crossed it shows up soon and we'll get this thing ripping. Five months later, I grew a mustache. Yes! It's been five months since that last clip. And it's because of this stupid little belt right here. This dumb belt. I didn't measure it properly. I should have measured it. Uh, with a string or some other way, but I used CAD and I used online calculators, which are all junk, so don't use those. And in the time I was waiting for that, I grew a mustache, a really gross one, and all this over. So I'm going to shave all this off, come back and show you some rag clips of me shredding this thing. But the important part is this thing rips now. It's got perfect tension across the wheel. It's transferring power. I had some slippage problems after I got this on, but I got it all fixed. But yeah, let's get some. Let me show you some clips. Let me show you some clips of this thing freaking ripping. Okay.
enjoyed those clips. This bike is absolutely ridiculous, just like my mustache was looking. I want you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the bell because I'm going to have some crazy content coming up soon. I'm going to put some pros on this bike. I'm going to do some bucket list tricks. And I want you to leave a comment below of what you think I should do with this bike. This thing's insane. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. Have a good one.